and uh, this is the first time in I think two years that uh, the company has has had their their summit live. And uh, past two two years before that, it was it was in in Maui, and and we're here on the Big Island, and uh, at Kona. So it's a really nice, beautiful place, but um, very educational and. I think the, the important thing, so Qualcomm really had to do two things. I think on day one, they had to establish that, uh, has had to establish their play in premium Android smartphones. And then day two, the story was about how Qualcomm is leveraging all of their IP building blocks into growth areas like automobiles, uh, XR, uh, uh, things uh, like that. And I would say on day one, Daniel, um, I feel like I, I don't see any reason why Qualcomm won't dominate in premium Android smartphones in, in 2022. And uh, I think if people are focusing on, you know, one CPU benchmark, they're, they're missing the point completely because what Qualcomm is doing, I think, I wouldn't call it new, but there's an invigoration here to really lean into the experiences. Uh, whether that's camera, whether that's gaming, whether that's uh, productivity, whether that's connectivity and, and the applied use of, of AI. I, I think when it comes to the camera, there's no doubt in my mind that it, it will be uh, the highest featured, highest quality if the OEMs fully take advantage of it. When it comes to AI, I believe that on a performance per watt and an even overall performance, if you're using all three of their AI accelerators, then um, Qualcomm will have the the best performance uh, out there. Um, so, you know, I, I think in connectivity, uh, with them raising the game with that monster uh, upload speed, um, I think it was a 320 megabits per second uh, upload speed. Three and a half gigs, Pat. Oh, sorry, sorry. Three and a half gig uh, really up leveled it. So I feel like. Um, they're going to do really well. They're going to continue to do well, and, and I think they made. I think they made their case. I think for uh, the PC market, I, I feel like this is an interim step uh, in in terms of, of what they're doing. They brought out the G three X Gen one, um, and they also G three G three X Gen one for handheld gaming, uh, and then on the PC side, they they upped the performance of pretty much everything. Uh, the connectivity, the CPU, the GPU, uh, up to 60%. And I think that is a, a major uh, move. Now, you know, do, do I think that Qualcomm this year is going to go in and commandeer 10% of the notebook market? Uh, I don't think so. And I don't think that Qualcomm expects to do this. I feel like this is the final preview before we get to the Nuvia-based um, um, silicon here. Now, um, like the smartphone, I feel like like the PC group, if they can fully leverage and, and partner with Microsoft to enable AI and Windows, they will have a, a much uh, better uh, showing out there. You know, Daniel, I think I left you uh, automotive, gaming, uh, and a couple and XR and, and a lot of other stuff here. Yeah, there's a lot of, of, of header topics and, and segment topics that I could go into. To me, I wanted to go a little bit more philosophical. You and I like to operate at that altitude, and, and, and I really was coming away from this in the heels of Investor Day, on the heels of listening uh, to now Cristiano and the leadership talk multiple times, that it feels like the story and that narrative is becoming a bit more cemented as to how this company becomes a growth trajectory company here, and Snapdragon is going to be key. First of all, brand is a very interesting um bifurcation that's going on at this current juncture. It, Snapdragon for a long time has sort of operated as a brand, but not really. And now the company has come out and very clearly crystallized the fact that Snapdragon will be the consumer brand. So Qualcomm is a known entity in the enterprise and it's got a, a remarkable amount of, of uh, you know business support, licenses, relationships. But when it comes to brand identity over the past half decade and beyond, the company has found itself in some hot water in numerous different stages, uh, litigation with Apple. It's had strong regulatory um, you know, rulings that have, have 
plagued it. And one of the reasons I always thought the company was a little bit vulnerable, even when Broadcom uh, attempted a, a sneaky takeover of the company, was that the brand identity was always a little bit um, light in terms of with consumers, where companies like Apple and AMD and NVIDIA have these really strong retail back support. And Snapdragon is, in my eyes, one of the most likely uh, vehicles to creating a, a strong sentiment between the community of Android and premium tier mobile device users and now XR users, automobile users, um, uh, handheld gaming users, where they're going to start to see that Snapdragon uh, brand and that identity come up um, as, as something that they can fall in love with. And I know that sounds maybe a little bit idealistic, but I'm okay with that. You know, I look at the way, and you know, I always like to you to jaunt a little bit into equities, but I look at the way AMD and NVIDIA have been able to run up, and I put so much weight behind it to the fact that they have an investment community of, of passionate um, users of their technology that literally buy every dip. They are so supportive of the company, and Qualcomm has a the technology. These devices are so closely glued to our identities these days uh, that I just imagine, I really do believe that getting that brand right is a huge story that's kind of being undertold because so many people here are sort of your geeky testing numbers people. And by the way, that's also not going to be driven entirely by that 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 device, um, mobile device in your hand. I actually think automotive is an extremely interesting part of the of the company. You saw uh, a, a long segment from GM CMO talking about their vehicle, the future, built on the digital chassis provided by Qualcomm. They recently yeah. made an announcement with BMW, which was a huge announcement for the company. Um, and basically having the components to do ADAS, infotainment, telematics um, at scale and give the building blocks, like you said, Pat, to these OEMs to be able to compete in the future with the Teslas, Lucids, Rivians, and these companies that are breaking through based upon building a, a car from the ground up as a network connected, intelligent edge device, which I hope Cristiano hears me say. Uh, because that is kind of the way he described it. So, you know, that for me, Snapdragon, it's all about really breaking out the brand here. I think the company did a good job. The 8 Series, the consistency across the different products and segments is good. Uh, Alex Katuzian, as usual, did a good job of kind of getting out there and, and working with his team because he really leads this whole this, this whole space. And, of course, Cristiano, uh, visible and vibrant, which for a CEO, now that he's in that role, um, you know, it's good to see that he's continuing to shake hands with everything from the insiders to the analysts, and he's really making sure to listen to our feedback. Yeah, that was pretty impressive that, uh, you know, Cristiano participated in pretty much every event, and I, I really, really appreciate that uh, for sure. Hey, the one thing that I, I forgot to bring up that, that I want to bring up here is that it was a real epiphany for me, uh, which was – the moat that Qualcomm has created strategically around them, if I look at the IP blocks that they have and the, the ancillary markets that they're going after, uh, like, you know, like XR and like, you know, this new gaming uh, vertical that, that they've gotten into with, with their new processor, Qualcomm's the only company other than Apple who is able to do this on on the mobile side, on the auto side, and and, and pull this together uh, right now. By the moat, I mean that they're leveraging core IP across of all of their product segments, and um, it makes it ultimately cheaper for them. And that's why financially, right, your net profit margins are in the tens. Uh, Qualcomm talked in New York about being in the twenties. And there's potential, I think, uh, for these guys to get in, in, in the 30s. But thanks for letting me uh, uh, boomerang there. But I wanted to get that across. 